a very good evening to all the viewers on this webinar on behalf of viroc 2019 i welcome you all to yet another edition of viroc ykspedia this is the ninth case in the series of cases which will culminate a week before viroc today we have with us an eminent spine surgeon dr mihir bapat who is a consultant and head of department of spine at the nanavati hospital dr bapat is going to speak to us about a case and his title is osteoporotic spinal fractures are they always benign i welcome dr mihir bapat and i hand over the proceedings to dr mihir bapat hi i am dr mihir bapat i welcome you all to viroc 2019 i am here to discuss about osteoporotic fractures that present to us with neurology are these osteoporotic fractures always benign so if we understand the pathogenesis of an osteoporotic fracture a, a bone is always composed of densely packed trabeculae as we keep aging because of age because of hormonal changes because of disease these bones become very very brittle over a period of time and these bone tend to fracture with the most trivial amount of forces as you can see here resultant in what we call as an osteoporotic fracture now when we look at these fractures are these fractures the same as any other fractures that is the question to be answered so if you look at an osteoporotic fracture because of the loss of trabecular pattern there is always a vacuum that is created in an osteoporotic fracture so such a fracture in the supine position will see will demonstrate such a vacuum but as the patient sits these fractures tend to collapse and they restore in height as the patient goes back to the supine position and therefore this phenomenon of collapse and restoration will keep repeating till the fracture eventually collapses into a vertebra plana or a burst fracture causing a delayed neurological deficit such neurological deficits usually present after 4 to 6 weeks of the fracture and therefore an osteoporotic fracture should not be considered as benign and one needs to observe these fractures over a prolonged period of time so when we look at the causes of neurological deficit one would assume that it is due to the stretching of the spinal cord or the corda equina or a collapsed burst fracture however it may also result from a secondary stenosis due to aggravation of a pre-existing stenosis secondary to the fracture or it may be due to an herniated disc above or below an osteoporotic fracture even after doing a vertebroplasty such kind of instabilities can continue and the spinal cord may still develop an injury 4 to 6 weeks after a vertebroplasty this brings us to the first case a 71 year old gentleman had a trivial fall like any other gentleman about 8 weeks back he presented to us with actual pain for one week and he had difficulty in standing walking and buckling particularly when he stood up from a lying down position when you examine such a patient in the lying down position you get a false impression that the power is 5 by 5 but the person is unable to stand and presents as a wheelchair bound person at the time of presentation if you see this x ray there is a restored height right at the top end of this x ray the vertebra seems to look normal when the patient lies down and this same vertebra has collapsed after 7 weeks of the first initial trauma so these fractures often tend to develop a secondary stress fracture and the fracture tends to progress over a period of time now if you see the mri there is absolutely loss of bone substance with a fluid sign which is present in the osteoporotic fracture that suggests to us that it's an unstable non union now this patient required to be stabilized using pedicular screws and rods and the bone height was restored and maintained with a vertebroplasty in this particular scenario 
Now, what this teaches us is that an osteoporotic fracture, if at the first presentation you tend to neglect, send this patient home and not do repetitive x-rays, you might be surprised that this patient is paraparatic at the end of seven weeks. Contrary to the uh, popular belief that these osteoporotic fractures would heal. The second case demonstrates that you have such an osteoporotic fracture with a retropulsion. Now this is causing aggravation of a pre-existing stenosis and that has resulted in compromise of the cord substance. And again, this requires a stabilization with restoration as well as decompression of the spinal cord because the, present, the patient has presented to you with paraparesis almost two months after the initial injury. This again highlights that osteoporotic fracture requires a longer follow-up. Now, in this particular case, would really one believe that a wedge compression fracture would result in cord compromise? But as you can see, there is a slight amount of translation there is retropulsion of the posterior superior quadrant of the vertebra and there is a distinct myelomalacia and cord edema which has resulted in aggravation of a pre-existing stenosis. This patient, when she stood up, resulted in sudden loss of power and the patient was almost bedridden uh, after the initial trauma which happened about a month back. Now, all these patients highlight a common problem that osteoporotic fractures are not always benign. These tend to collapse over a period of time and one requires a longer period of observation for these fractures to be absolutely sure that the patient heals well and does not develop a delayed neurology. Thank you. It was indeed a wonderful presentation, a very short one, but very, very powerful, very informative. And of course, there was a wonderful message to it that you should not underestimate these osteoporotic vertebral fracture. Uh, on behalf of the Vairag Organizing Committee, I thank Dr. Mehir Bapat. And I also welcome you all once again to Vairag 2019. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.